Hello, everybody. Uh, this is DFS Chan um, coming to you here to talk about August 10th uh, League of Legends DFS slate. Um, as promised, here is the mat matchup analysis video. We have a banger four game slate, in my opinion, tonight. Um, you know, two games in China and two games in Korea. So without any further ado, let's dive in. EDG versus anyone's legend. Um, this is the matchup amongst the probably two playoff teams, even though anyone's legend could um, knock, them, knock, knock themselves out of the playoff contention. Here you will see that EDG is kind of locked in in the fifth or sixth spot um, with the record at 10 and 5. So they don't really have huge, you know, playoff motivation or incentive to play well or to have to win this, anything like that. Um, anyone's legend on the other hand, though, they're seven and seven and they really need to win um, to stay in this playoff hunt. Otherwise, they could drop off down to here. If you finish below the 10th spot, yeah, I mean, you're going to miss out on the playoffs, right? So anyone's legend is desperate uh to get this win get the series um but i just feel like edg has been on fire lately um you know pretty they've been playing pretty well let's just put it that way and then also in the in, the, in those positions where anyone's legend has the big biggest weaknesses and let's dive into that real quick so edg is starting uh junjia at jungle um Last series, I believe EDG won the first game and then they subbed in um, JJ at jungle. And I know that screwed up a lot of people that screwed a lot of people. Um, and I do think I truly believe that they were just experimenting, you know, with different configurations and trying out different jungler and all that nonsense um, that I would not do if I were a coach, if especially after winning the first game. But um, I think, I don't know if they're going to do that again. I mean, I personally do not know, but if I have to guess, I think that was just like a one-time experiment um, here. I think EDG is going to stick with Junja. Um, like I said, EDG has looked much better with Junja at jungle. Um, and I just feel like, um, you know, they just got to get ready and build up the momentum, you know, heading into the playoffs so I assume that they're I presume that they're gonna want some consistency with Junja at jungle and just keep going there with that same, you know, starting five. So we'll see what happens there. But you know, I, I do like Junja um here tonight. Um he's had he has a tough matchup though against Xiao Hao, who has been a terrific um jungler for anyone's legend. Um <clears throat> anyone's legends biggest strengths have been Xiao Hao and Betty and Cho Cho. If you have watched my videos before and their biggest weaknesses have been ZDZ and forge in the top lane and the mid lane. And frankly, I, I really like EDG's uh, positions there with Flandre having an advantage, huge advantage over, over ZDZ, I think. And then scout has been playing really, really well, uh, especially the last two weeks or so um, over forge. And then, you know, Viper and Mako are not are no joke. Um, I do think they are better than Betty and Chocho. Um, so I just feel like EDG should win this. Um, I, I can kind of see a path where anyone's legend could win, um, you know, through jungle and then through the mid lane potentially. Um, and then maybe early snowballing in the bottom lane. But against Viper and Mako, that's going to be pretty tough especially in the form that they're in. I know Viper has been the most consistent player for EDG at least. So, and he does not let the other, other AD carry, you know, get fed and snowball from there. Um, especially in the early game, you know, without any other uh, other teammates assistance. So I do think EDG has a lot of advantages here tonight. Um, I feel like they should really win. So my prediction is that EDG wins, uh, this match probably two to one. Um, I do think anyone's legend is desperate um, to take a game at least. Um, they will be competitive. They'll show up. I think they'll be very very motivated for playoff purposes. Whereas EDG, like I said, does not have as much playoff motivation. 
but really that's the only <laughs> um bases that i think anyone's legend that i think why anyone's legend could pull this off but so i don't think that's a very good one justifiable one um in terms of the actual like matchup analysis individually but also team fights and everything um edg is a better um you know just a better team so i, I like edg here tonight um the next matchup in china is this is a very interesting one um invictus gaming versus omg um omg is a favorite at minus 220 and then invictus gaming is an underdog at plus 170 and invictus gaming has been playing well i mean they've been playing much better lately the last two weeks <laughs> even though as you see here they've been technically eliminated from the playoffs but i do think they can um they have a you know they have several paths where they can pull this off um whereas omg has been struggling a bit um especially with shanji and aki and uh cream on different cha on certain champions they've been struggling and the bottom lane has always struggled in my opinion for omg so yeah i mean like as ig has been getting better with this lineup with mole in the mid lane mole has been playing really really well I mean, ever since Mole started for IG, IG has looked like a different team. And with On and Wink, I mean, these three right here, Mole, On, and Wink, um, ever since they started, this combination has paid off uh, dividends for IG. Um, so I do think IG um, has several paths that they can win. I'm going to still predict, though, that OMG is going to win two to two to one. But I can definitely see IG pull this off in an upset. I'm definitely going to have exposure to both teams, both IG and OMG. Um, I do think this is going to be the bloodiest uh, matchup amongst four games on the slate. So that's another reason why you want to uh, play an underdog in this kind of a bloody matchup um, because, you know, at least you're playing the underdog with kill upside, right? So like even if, so when you're picking an underdog, you want to pick the underdog, um, that can score well for DFS purposes. And IG fits that mold tonight. Um, so I, I'll definitely have some IG exposure for sure. And then in the LCK, it's going to be Gen G versus Fred Brion. I won't go any further than that. As you see the odds here on the screen at minus 5,000 for Gen G. And then Fred Brion at uh, plus 1,100 as an underdog. Genji should win two to zero, um, and they do have um, some motivation. Let's see, to finish as a number one seed. So let's look at that real quick. So as you see, that Genji um, is fifteen and one, and T one is fourteen and two. Um, I'll talk about the second matchup later between T1 and Sandbox. That's a tough matchup, but Genji, you know, really needs to win this to keep that keep you know hang on to that number one seed. And Fred and Brian, had, even though they've been playing a little bit better lately with Lava, um, playing really well in the mid lane. Um, he's going up against Chovy, and yeah, I mean it's Genji. Genji's metrics are ridiculously high and ridiculously good. <laughs> Um, compared to Fred Brion's. Um, so no matter how you cut it, um, roster comparison, metric comparison, Genji is superior in all of those. Um, yeah, I just don't see them losing. I mean, I could maybe see them maybe have a letdown, stuff like that. But, you know, like I, I am more like a data-driven guy um, and then like an eye test guy. And on either front, um, Genji should win, in my opinion. Um, but, you know, like, I cannot just say, oh, I, I feel like they're going to have a letdown game. Right? It's like, that's not a very good, solid analysis, in my opinion. Um, like, no, anybody can make that prediction. Like, oh, they're just going to have a letdown game. But, like, that's just, you know, that just, you know, it just, you know, guessing, basically. It's playing the guess game. I, I don't like doing that. So, yeah, I think Genji is going to win 2-0. to zero. Uh, But... Um, one other, one last important thing I'll point out about this game, though, between Genji and Fred Brion, is that this has the least um, kill upside amongst the four matchups, 
as you guys know, Fred Brian plays really slow. Um, Genji also plays slow. Um, not as slow as Fred Brian, but you know, on the very slow side. So I do think this is gonna be a low, low kill matchup. Um, unless Fred Brian somehow wants this wants to turn this into a clown fiesta. But I just don't see them doing it as <laughs> some of the LPL teams have done in the past. Um, so I think Gen G's like team slot is really good, um, even though it's expensive. Um, they like to secure objectives. Peanut is notoriously known for that. Uh, he's really good at that. So I think Genji at team spot's good if you want to kind of like differentiate your lineup, um, you know, picking your stacks and then maybe have a one-off at Genji team slot which, you know, can be a good idea tonight. T1 versus uh, Lift Sandbox. And now this is going to be a marquee matchup tonight. Um, T1 is in the number two seed. Uh, Sandbox is number three on the standings. Um, Sandbox has been playing well, not going to lie. Um, especially Prince. Especially Prince. Um, he's been playing really well. Um, but... They do put a lot of the lot of um, resources into Prince's hands early game for him to carry in the late game. So Dove um, has a tough matchup against Zeus, and then Croco has a tough matchup against Owner. And Closer, you know, he used to play for T1 in the past, so he knows all the all these T1's players. Uh, tendencies and going up against the goat and faker um, I think that's going to be more of a wash I think closer looks really good on certain champions like aggressive champions like Akali and stuff like that um, but you know T1's coaching staff knows better and I think they'll do a good job of not letting closer beat T1 by himself which is hard to do and then like I said Prince has been playing amazing along with Kale um, I'm actually going to say that Prince and Kale have been playing better than Gumayushi and Karia, in my opinion. Gumayushi has been really struggling um, at times, and same for Karia. Um, but that bottom duo, you know, has performed really, really well in the um, spring split. But ever since they had come back, have come back from the MSI tournament where they struggled, started struggling, um, they've just never fully recovered and they are still struggling a bit. They've gotten better the last couple of weeks or so, but still they're not back to where that form where they used to be in. Um, so I, I do have to give an advantage to Prince and Kale there uh, in favor of Sandbox. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's going to be a tough matchup for both teams. Um, but Sandbox likes to skirmish. They like to engage in team fights. So the kill upside, you know, gets a little bumped up for both teams and T1 and Sandbox. Um, but at the end of the day, I think T1 really needs to win this, you know, to keep this uh, train going. Um, Sandbox is kind of like stuck in the third seed spot, um, whereas T1 has still has a shot at the number one seed. So I do think T1 is going to have a little more motivation and I feel like they have a better team. Um, so I'm going to predict T1 to win, but like I said, Sandbox is an, uh, is a live dog. Um, so I would definitely have exposure to both teams. So, you know, to cap, to cap it off, um, I like EDG to win. Um, and I like, um, having exposure to both OMG and IG, even though I think OMG is going to win and then Gen G will win. And then I like, I think T1 will win, but I'll have exposure to both T1 and Sandbox given the kill upside, but also given the form that Sandbox has been in. Um, yeah. So if you guys have any other questions, um, let me know. Um, you can reach out to me at DFS Chan. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. Um, that would mean a lot. Um, this video has been sponsored by True, True DFS. As you see on the screen, you can click on uh, my tweet and on True DFS. Um, go check out their videos about other sports and join their member uh, membership. Um, otherwise, Good luck out there. Um, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, let me know what you thought and let me know what you think about the predictions. Otherwise, yeah, come, uh, you know, um, feel free to message me and yeah, good luck out there. Have a good one. Bye-bye.